Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is a follow-on video from doing the fuel filter. So I'm just currently on doing the second service on this 2019 Mitsubishi L200. So we're just about to drop the oil out. I'm going to try and document it as best as I can. So a little procedure as I like to do, just before you start, just loosen the oil cap off, pull the dipstick out, and obviously we'll take it up and I'll have to remove the trays. One thing I'm keeping an eye on, on my previous video, I did the fuel filter. Um, and I've noticed this little area here keeps getting damp and I was a little bit concerned just that that join in the center I was a little bit concerned that it wasn't sealed properly But what I've done since is used the high pressure Airline and blasted it and what tends to happen is is a lot of diesel gets trapped in that Ring that you tighten up. So I'm just going to monitor it. I've primed it up to full pressure And I'm just going to leave it while I'm doing the it's not focusing in very well So the thing is if you do this um, and you find there's a little bit of diesel starting to come around that appear uh, around that ring up to now I'll update you as and when um, I think that's just normal and it will leak a little bit and it's just diesel that's leaked into the little Shroud the, the threaded ring that goes around it, but I'll keep an eye on it If I need to dismantle it again, I will uh, just to monitor it. So The next step is we're well, going to take it take the car up. I'm going to attempt to, to film it as we're doing it there we go. Just stop it at that height and I'll just grab the lamp and we'll go around and just check that all the mountain points haven't moved. Because I think it would give you a bit of a headache if one of these fell on your head. Let's have a look. On the front mountain point there, good. The front ones are no problem, it's just around the back where it sits on where this where the leaf spring mounts to the body. And that's nicely on as it should be. And we'll go around. Because you can't mess around with this kind of thing. I'm not seeing any difference between a little Ford Ka falling on you if one of these. Either way, the end result is not going to be in your favour. So that one's nice and secure. As you can see, I'm using the extension bars on the lift. But otherwise, just be careful if you're taking your car in. If you, if uh, you know that your local garage is using these things here, special extension bars. If they don't. You'll tend to find you'll get your car back and your side steps have been crushed. Especially if you're using the aftermarket ones. Because I do tend to find original equipment stuff seem to have a much better, uh, what's the word, tolerance for putting on two post lifts. Where a lot of this aftermarket stuff that you fit, uh, that seems to go out the window. And I have an absolute nightmare with some cars coming in, getting them lined up on the lift. So, we'll carry on. We'll send the car up. Obviously, you've just got to keep an eye at the top there. We'll just get the car. We've checked that we've got enough clearance at the back, which we have. This lift is 4.2 ton loaded, so don't worry. This car's only probably two tons, so the lift's, to be quite honest, the lift's lifting this just as good as it would lift this little Corolla here. So it's really impressive, this lift. Take it up to the working height, I think that'll do it, and then we'll just send it down onto the locks because you never want to rely on, on hydraulics. So, there we go, it's onto the lift place now. I feel safe going underneath. We'll have a quick walk around. Um, I'm, I can't video all this, but I can help everybody to the best of that to the best of my abilities, and I'll try to uh, show what I've done. Obviously, we can walk around as we can see underneath. This car looks totally original underneath, chassis, everything. One of my things that I've said, what I've done with the car, is I did a clear wax oil underneath. And this is what clear wax oil does. If you look really closely, you might be able to just see it. And I, it, I think it just looks much better than that thick black tar, the black wax oil that goes on. I'm not keen on that stuff at all. So that, you can see it just on there, like it's just like a, like a haze there, like some there. Um, so that's what I've done. Everything's been coated, the axle, the tank, all the floor pan, it's the first thing I did when I got the car back brand new. And in fairness, this is the first time I've viewed this car underneath since I, got, since I did the wax oiling. So, first thing I'll show, is you may notice I've got a steel wheel on here. As a guy, uh, I forgot his name, I travelled all the way to the Scottish Borders uh, in my little combo van. If you're watching this, just give us a like or a mention. And I've got four steel wheels, the guy was very helpful. And I took my alloy off from underneath and put this underneath. Number one, so the alloy doesn't get... As you can imagine, one of these slung underneath the car. 
they're just going to deteriorate. Uh, and second of all, it's a favourite thing that people are doing going around pinching them. Uh, and obviously, you see, you just need to go in through this point here and you've got them. So the steel wheel is pretty worthless to someone, but it's got a nice new... I think that's like some kind of Toyo all-terrain tyre. So, again, if we're ever out somewhere in the, you know, wilds, in the hills, you know, at least this is a suitable wheel slash tyre to get me back. Um, as you can see, I've coated all the... the hard with the light. The welded joints on the exhaust where the rust with some high-temperature paint. Just precautionary work, you know. Um, I'll come forward here. You can see all the chassis being coated with the clear wax oil all the way along. You can see it better there. All been done, the full lot. I spent ages doing it all. Don't worry, those lines you can see aren't like a line that I've done and then I've missed the rest. That's just where it's gone on a bit thick. The whole system is done. Um, as you can see, this exhaust here, you know, 10,000 mile. I'm going to maybe give that a coating with something. I can't see them lasting long. But I did go around all the joints and paint them. But even you can see, even the, high, the exhaust must have been getting pretty hot because even the high temperature paint um has kind of deteriorated i'm also going to grease up the prop shaft joints with the gun we've got this one to do that one to do um that one to do and then when we drop these there is the one for the front but obviously as you can see with this car i fitted the full mitsubishi protection kit to it i'll start from the front what we can see here, yeah. If you've got an original one of these fitted, you'll sit. It'll probably sit about sort of that height, which impair, which gets in the way when you're kind of approaching like rocks and stuff. So the Mitsubishi one is shorter, so it sits up higher, so it gives you much better ground ground clearance, which is really important on your front end when hitting a hill, but in the back end as well when you're going up a hill. So that was fitted. Again, this is much heavier duty metal than the original ones. And then on the other ones, you, there's a thick, a thin bit of metal tin here. It, it replaces, it comes in three sections. This is your centre section here. And then this bit here doesn't exist. That You get this as an extra. So that covers your whole gearbox and transfer box. And as you can see, when you're going off-road, even, they've even fitted like a special, like, uh, what's the word, like a crash impact system on the gearbox because they know that's a low point for grounding out. So, um, you know, that's... It all extra protection around the gearbox, which is great. Uh, I know there's a few people on the forum saying, oh, they're, they're rubbish. They're, you know, I, I went off-road once and it just folded like paper. Well, maybe if you're throwing these cars around like they're, like they're a toy, then fair enough, but uh, you must have more money than me because uh, a 20 grand car, I'll have a bit of fun off-road, but I'm certainly not going to go uh, to the extent where I'm folding these things up like paper, hitting huge rocks and stuff. Uh, off-roading's off-roading, but there's a certain degree you, you do off-roading with um, a brand new, wait, it was a, a brand new vehicle. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to just drop these trays. I'll cut out of the video and come back in. Um, oh, I don't need to, I just need to take this one off and that one to get the oil filter and probably drop this one to check the fluids. So as you can see at the back here, that's your check drain plug. We'll be checking the rear diff. Just a check plug, that's all you need to do. Uh, we'll be also, this is your transfer box, which that's your drain and that's your check. So we'll be checking that. The gearbox, I'm yet to get to that. Um, obviously I need to drop the, um, this tray. I'm just trying to spy where it is. It'll be somewhere. Clearly I need to drop all this out the way first before I can do that. Um, we're going to be doing the brake fluid. So we'll be cracking the bleed nipples off. And I'll get an assistant in the car just to pump through. As you can see on the back drums, they're just up here, the bleed nipples at the top. Just make sure when you do these, you put plenty of grease back on them, because when they seize, you're in a whole world of pain. Um, and what else is I've got to do? I'm trying to think what there was now. Oh, I if I have time, I'm, I don't know if anybody else re realises with these cars, is that when the handbrake starts to travel quite a lot, the back drums need, they don't seem to like to, um, to tension that, to... What's the word? Adjust yourself back up very well. I've already done this once before. I'm going to have to do it again. Because it's not just your handbrake. What you'll find is you'll have excessive uh, travel on your foot brake. And believe it or not, by just adjusting these up a few clicks on the back manually inside the drum, improves your foot brake no end. As well as the hill assist system, because it, it doesn't involve the shoes having to move out as far. And also your handbrake doesn't travel all the way up. So definitely something if you're taking it to your garage or do it yourself. 
It's an easy job, just take the wheel off, the drums aren't even on with any screws or anything, they just pop off and you just wind a little wheel around on the on the tensioners, which I will show you. So, obviously these are the general all-terrain tyres, I find these are fantastic, these have done about a thousand mile now, and they are not showing any signs of wear. I really did expect on the front ones, where, you know, where you're steering and stuff, that we would get be getting some wear, but if you look close enough at them, they've still got the little dimple marks in them from when... Um, they were brand new, so a thousand mile in. I'm very, very impressed with these. General AT3 grab, as they call them. But I've already put me say about the tyre size, go 255, 65, 17. The originals are 245. Everybody raves about 265, 70. Don't do it, you'll just ruin the, kit, the drivability of your car on road. It will improve off road, but I think these give you an extra little bit of width and height. Uh, and it's just enough and it keeps the car totally original the um the ride is better on road than what it used to be clearly off road it's on another level uh there's no extra noise it doesn't affect your speedo uh, that that fantastic the only downside is you keep getting loads of stones caught in them um but that's just me being picky which i probably when i get when the oil's draining i'll go around with a screwdriver and pop them all out uh Probably by the time I reverse it out the yard, it'll have all new stones in. So I'll come back to you when I've got the trays removed from underneath. Thank you. Welcome back. So I've just removed the front section here. In the second section, I'll grab the light because uh, it's rather dark in here. So as you can see, the front section's been removed. We have section, so now I've got access to check the front diff. And also, I've just moved all the prop shafts around. I'm gonna to have to get an assistant because I can't um, use the grease gun and fill them at the same time, but obviously I can get in there and do that one. I've got this one positioned nicely to do that one. Um, obviously there's a the front diff to check there. And let's have a look, I haven't even looked yet. Um, for the, some plug are fantastic, so it's right back here and we'll have to remove this plate, um, I think. Uh, yep, had to be, didn't it? So there you go, there's your Mitsubishi quality item there. So they've, uh, they sell you a very expensive under tray thing. And they couldn't even be bothered to put a little hole or a little section you can just unbolt off so you have to take everything. I had to anyways to do the um, the gearbox check of the oil. So that's that. But anyways, the oil filter's up here. We're just going to remove the oil filter um, and let that drain. I'll let the sump drain at the same time. So I'll cut, I'll just pause this one and I'll cut back in very soon. So I'll just cut back in there, as you can see. Just cracked the oil filter off. Just let it drain. Luckily with these, they didn't go on everything. So just rather than trying to get yourself covered in oil, just simply uh, crack it off a bit. Let it drain until it stops running. And I've got the new oil filter ready here. Make sure, as always, that you uh, get some clean engine oil, rub it round the seal. And when you remove the old filter, which I see a lot of people making the error, is once you've removed it, make sure on the housing where it sits to the face of the oil filter housing that the old seal hasn't left, been left behind. So many people forget about this. You'll put your new oil filter on, start it up, and you'll just get oil spraying everywhere. And probably knock your engine as well. So when you unscrew it, I'll cut back in, I'll show you what I mean. I'll be back in a second. So I'll just cut back in there. There's your the old filter off. As you can see up there on the face, see how it's just nice, there's no rubber seal. It's currently draining, so just make sure you let it drain. There's no point in trying to do an oil change in a hurry on these cars. Because it just it isn't a quick procedure. By the time you get the thing on the lift, you get all the under trays off, um, Another reason, to be quite honest, why I like this car, and I'm a big fan of them, but this is why I hate these kind of four-wheel drives coming in, because it's just a ball ache to work on. Like, literally, if you got that on the lift, two seconds to put it on the lift, no under trays, the oil filter straight at hand, bang, 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 done. These things, uh, luckily, this is not a bad one, because the oil filter is nice and accessible. I suppose if that tray wasn't added on there, it would be a bit easier, but, um, you know, it's all adds to the hassle you know but anyways that's the filter there you can see the o-ring still on it just make sure that that's still on um and off subject here it's i'm saying not to hurry it's perfectly fine on these engines to let the oil filter drain properly 
Same with the sump. But everybody, I've heard a few people raving on about these fantastic Ford Rangers, which I think are rubbish. Uh, not so much the vehicle, but the engines, all of them. The two litre, what is it? Eco Blue, trash. 2.2 engine, I think they're doing them. Trash. And the 3.2 not a great deal better than them and especially on the 3.2 the, the 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 oil filters up in the wheel arch here if you let that oil filter drain for too long and you let the oil drain too long out the sump when you put your oil back in you get an airlock in the oil system and you can knock up the engine starting them up so if you own a ford ranger do the complete opposite of what i'm telling you to do make sure you get that oil filter off and get the new one in as quick as you can as well as drain the minute in fact i wouldn't even let the, the oil in the sump start draining dry i would just let it drain out and once it reaches the point where it's down to just a, a, a slow trickle put the sump plug back in and it goes fast as you can and get the oil into the car and get it in, into the engine and get it started because they are a nightmare this is on the 3.2 i can't comment for the other engines but a 3.2 ranger do not hang about when you're doing an oil change on one which is another one of my reasons why i say these cars are not perfect but don't buy a ford ranger <laughs> uh, not necessarily because of the vehicle but because of the engines in them that terrible so i'll cut back in once i've got the other tray down and we're draining the oil out right that's the oil draining now i've just put a new filter on up there just make sure when you put the new filter on you only use your hands don't use the filter wrenches because if you put them on with those they'll be too tight and you'll cause leaks so it's just normally as tight as you can with your hands and that's enough and then clean the oil off so you can check for any leaks just draining the oil now you know it wouldn't have harmed for them to put the sump plug here so you just had to take this tree off they've put it back there so you've got to take the main i mean i know, I know this has been an add-on but it is an official mitsubishi product so in my opinion they should have had a hole cut out as you can see the extent you've got to go to with you know gearbox hoists and uh you know oil drainers like that i know you can just take it off but uh you try putting one of these back on on your own you can't, unless you've got two people, which I didn't have at the time, and I probably won't have when it's done. You cannot lift one of these up on your own and line it up. So, you know, this is the kind of problems we deal with on a daily basis with manufacturers. So, we'll let the oil drain, put the new... Remember, I've got all these new sump plugs and gearbox plugs and stuff to go on. So, we'll just let that drain. And then once we've let it drain, we'll move on to doing the, uh, the prop shafts greasing those up i've already just been around and done the brake fluid i can't really flip film doing that because i need somebody in the car and there's a lot of shouting back and forwards to pump the pedal and things like that uh plus brake fluid remember brake fluid if you get it on your paint it's like paint stripper so again i didn't want any ex extra added distractions while we're dealing with topping up the brake fluid for getting onto the paint work so yep i'll come back with another video when we do the prop shafts uh and when we do the initial start up remember once you've drained the oil and you've put your oil your sump plug back on with the new seal to the correct torque you don't just go too tight with them um put your oil in run the engine then check underneath for leaks don't go straight away like i see some people banging all the covers back on underneath starting the car up because then that way you can't check for any leaks so leave the covers off till you've had the engine running right i'll come back in with another video thanks right welcome back uh that's the oil dropped out i'm just going to put the new oil in i'm going to try and do a time lapse on this because i've probably got a few journeys to go back and forwards um but we'll go back through just so just remember five five thirty c3 fully synthetic oil you need i've got it ready to go in um but clearly i'm not going to fill them going back and forwards so i'll just put it onto some time lapse and i'll cut back in as and when we've got the right level and we'll do the relevant checks and also i'll do a recording of the doing the prop shaft as well greasing the joints so i'll cut back in when i've done it Right, I'll cut back in, that's the oil in, it's took 8 litres and obviously we need to run it and it's not level on the lift yet, so um, we'll just see how much more it needs, we need to start it up now, let it run, Check. For, I'm going to take it back up, check for leaks, around the oil filter, put the remaining tray on underneath, bring it back down 
and then we'll get a proper check of the oil level. To be honest, I'll probably do the final check of the oil level when it's off the lift, because if I have time, I was considering doing the back drums, and you can't really get a proper check of the oil until it's off the lift, it's been run out the garage, back in again, and then leave it to stand for five minutes, and then you get a true reading of the oil. Just make sure you're not checking your oil, like, on a hill, on a cut, on any kind of you know, uneven surface, make sure it's dead on the level. Hence, I don't do any very, like, final checks while they're on lifts or when they've just been dropped as the suspension isn't set in the right height. You've got to run them around the yard and back in, let them stand for five minutes once they've warmed up, and then you can do a true oil reading. So we're just going to start it up. Just do your double checks. You know, I'm, I'm trying to video record and do this at the same time. So we'll just double check the oil caps on. That's on. We know the oil filter's tight. We know the sump plug's on. I'm just having to remember now whether or not I've left the keys in or not. Yep, they are. So I'm just going to jump in. <laughs> Basic thing, check they're in neutral. Don't want to be flying off the lift. Ignition on. I'm going to have to just put the camera on the floor here while I press the clutch to start it up. That was me not pushing the clutch far enough with my hand. Just check there's no oil lights on. That will normally go off within a few seconds. Just leave it, you know, you don't have to leave them running long initially. Just check you've got no strange noises. You can see everything's running fine. Obviously, if you get any kind of strange noises initially, unlike what I've just done there, because I didn't uh, have me, I would have to use my hand to depress the clutch because I can't fit in properly through the gap. Right, I'm having to cut it in out on this video because things keep happening with this phone. So we've had it run and um, you just need to just check this. That's why I've left this cover off. That's the oil filter there. No oil on it. And just if you can, I don't know if you'll be able to see with the phone, but you can just see the corner of the sun plug up there. That's dry as a bone as well. So what I'm going to do now, I've just done it at the back. I've got the grease gun out. We've greased this prop joint here. We need to do this one. That one, that one, and that one. So I'll fill them a few, I may just fill them one, doing an example, you know, but you know that there's one, two, three, four, five that you need to do. I've had a look around the front end. Sometimes you have the points on the ball joints, but these don't have them. There's not one at the top either, and there's nothing else around the front that you need to do that with, like some of the Land Rovers. So I'll cut back in when I get that far. I'm just going to put this under tray back on and get things set up thanks right that's the under tray on as we've mentioned checked it but um i've been on doing these I, I couldn't video it everybody knows how to use a grease gun as you can see there's the bleed nipple there you just stick it on and obviously once the grease pushes past the little seals a little bit you don't want to go mad have grease flinging everywhere so that's that joint done this joint done, I know these prop shafts can be faulty with these cars, so just make sure this gets done on your service, because I believe these joints wear out or something, and you can't, they can't be replaced. I don't know if it's this model in particular, but I have heard rumours about that. Then you go on to this joint, I need to give that one a bit more of a rub up, but it's all been done. And that is that joint, and I also forgot to mention, there's that joint there, where it, you inject the grease inside the shaft, because it moves with the movement of the engine. Make sure that gets done, which it's been done. You don't pump away at that too much, otherwise it'll leak out everywhere. And then your final one, that's been done. So that's all them done. So yeah, so that's pretty much the end of the service. Um, I'm going to strip the brake drums down. I may document adjusting the rear, the rear drums. Um, all the diffs have been checked. As you can see, I've marked them up with the white paint, gearbox, all the rest of it. The uh, bleed nipples have been done, new brake fluid put in um so yeah that's more or less how to do it the only thing i haven't done really is the air filter which isn't part of this service which comes off with two clips in a pollen filter so yeah so that's really all that there's left to do now i mean just it's not part of the service but it's part of the checks to check the rear drums for um you know adjustment and i do think they need done a bit this will be twice they've been done now in well, the car's only got 10,000 miles, so it's just with them being brand new shoes on brand new drums, they're just bedding in. I mean, the automatic adjuster should really um, be picking up the slack, but they're not for some reason. There's nothing wrong with them. They just mustn't be um, 
adjusting as well as what they should be. But definitely recommend doing them because that's a big issue with these, with the handbrake coming up too far, foot brake travelling too far down, and it does affect yeah, like hill assist as well. It it because there's more like uh, area for the shoe to travel before it meets the drum. So yeah, I'll probably come back in on this video if I decide to strip the drums and do a brief description and how to guide on those. So thank you and bye. Right, welcome back to the final part of the film. All I'm gonna do now is start the car, run it outside, bring it back in and we'll check the oil. I'm not bothering doing the back brakes. Uh, I'm running out of time, so I'll do that on another video. Maybe when I strip the front brakes as well, but we'll save that for another day. I'm just gonna jump in, start it up, take it out, bring it back in. So just in case you didn't understand what I did there, I mentioned in the previous video, just with the car being up on the lift, all the suspension is unsettled and you get an uneven uh, measurement on the oil. So just simply reverse it out, bring it back in. I'm just gonna pause the video now, we'll leave it for a couple of minutes just for the oil to settle down to the bottom of the engine and then we'll get an accurate reading of the oil. So I'll come back to you soon. Right, well, welcome back to the final part. So, this, from what I've put in for, with a good drain, plus when you've started up and filled the new filter, and you can't pre-fill the filters on these because they go on at an angle, so if you want to pre-fill them, you'd probably spill half of it out. So unfortunately, due to the design and location, you can't pre-fill the filters. But with a good drain and a new filter, you'd be safe to put nine litres of oil in and that gets them spot on to the mark. So there's a good bit of advice to save you messing about, trying it. Obviously, it's only this specification what's this engine number the 4n15 engine pretty safe if you've done a good drain a thorough drain and obviously put the new filter on i would safely say you can put between eight and a half to nine liters in start the engine and it should be bang on the mark uh, when you come to check it so just do what i've done drive it out bring it back in or just drive it around the yard or something if you've had it uh, jacked up to then check the oil so we'll just give it a dip and we'll have a look we'll just check Make sure it's a flat surface, and as you can see there, nicely on the mark, nice clean oil, makes a change for it to be clean again. I'll just quickly bring me around to this fuel filter, which I did have an issue with. I'm just going to have to grab a torch because I've um, typically left it on charge. I will be monitoring this for the next few days, but up to now... That seems bone dry, so it must just be a lot of the residual diesel sits inside that little uh, screw ring on it. So I'll just keep an eye on that. So yep, yeah, I'll just switch the camera around, clean my hands. So that's the final part. Uh, you know, this might be hit and miss. I've had to mix different videos in. I've had multiple disturbances where I've had to uh, stop the video and things like that. So, if you enjoyed watching it, like, subscribe, uh, you know, just bear in mind, please, I'm just using me, me mobile phone, which is ringing and messages are coming through, so I'm hoping that's not disturbing the, the video quality. Uh, free apps to make the thumbnails up and to edit the videos. 
you know, as you can see, it's my own car I'm doing here. I'm not making any money. This is nothing to do with the business. I'm purely doing this to help you guys, if it helps you, you know, even just to know the oil, how much oil it takes, where the grease um, nipples are underneath, what it needs, how much it costs. So if you like it, leave a comment, share it to people who may be interested. And thank you for watching. I'll catch you next time. Bye.